Now, when it comes to GMOs, there's actually a huge debate still raging between uh, pro-GMO activists and anti-GMO activists. Now, the people that are in favor of GMO cite over 2,000-plus peer-reviewed scientific papers basically saying that GMOs are in themselves not harmful. Now, those not in favor of GMOs will actually cite some of their own studies. Now, one such important study actually came from French researcher and scientist Gilles Eric Serolini. Now, he did this study on uh, specific rats, and apparently, according to his study, it had uh, those rats had actually developed cancers. Now, according to truthout.org, which actually got into this just a little bit more, um, basically pointed out that the Journal of Food and Chemical Toxicology had officially, had officially retracted that story. Now, or, I'm sorry, that study. Now, someone named A. A. Wallace Hayes had actually critiqued, uh, had actually echoed some critiques from scientists who were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you didn't uh, experiment on enough rats to support your cancer claims. And the specific rats that they had used actually are sprayed Dowley lab rats. And basically, uh, Hayes had said, well, if those rats are prone to developing cancers on their own if they live long enough. So I don't really, you know, he says, I don't really think that this study is that credible. Now, he said, we found no evidence of fraud or intentional misrepresentation of this data, but after reviewing the raw data, we determined the results were not incorrect, but inconclusive, and therefore not suitable for publication. Now, this, of course, ignited a firestorm between the scientific community um, and the GMO and anti-GMO activists. Now, uh, there's actually a lot more going on in, in, in this uh, in this fight between GMO activists and anti-GMO activists. And a lot of anti-GMO activists actually like to cite movies, in, uh, the movies, documentaries, Food Inc., and Seeds of Death. Now, I did a little bit of research into the, uh, the Seeds of Death. Now, it was actually created by a man named Gary Null. And when you look at Gary Null, he seems kind of crazy. He actually calls fluoride uh, deadly and has actually sp spoken out against immunization. He's an anti-vaxxer, food radiation. Fluoride is deadly. Uh, fillings and other medical treatments. And su not surprisingly, looking into this guy, he actually sells a variety of supplement products. You Close don't again. say! <laughs> That's a little see. That's that's a red flag right there. Selling uh, ne supposed natural nutritional supplements. Now he's actually marketed a variety of these products called, with some of the names as Brainy Two, Detox Formula, Gary's Green Stuff, <laughs> and Null Trim. Now, in addition to this kind of stuff, another thing that really throws a red flag on this one is his promotion of alternative cancer treatments and okay. and uh, uh, he's argued that get this the HIV fact that we're, hold, on, hold on Jeff, Jeff I'm sorry to cut you off the fact that we're still even talking about this guy after the words anti-vaccination <laughs> it <laughs> needs to be disqualifies I, 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 I totally I, I didn't mean to steal your thunder go ahead what's the big deal gets, no 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 see, see that it gets worse it gets Jesus. worse than being anti-vaxxer he actually has argued that HIV is harmless and does not cause AIDS. That's right. He wrote a book in 2002, AIDS, A Second Opinion. He questioned the role of antiretroviral medication and instead advocated a range of dietary supplements for HIV-positive individuals. This man is a nut, and I don't believe anything he says. Is he now, like the Fox News health correspondent or something? They're probably looking into it. No, and this is this is what's surprising about the, the, the GMO debate, is that there are a lot of health food individuals who normally a lot of take a lot of liberal opinions, right, and liberal sides on things that believe in this guy and have watched his documentary. And I mean, so they, they and, probably and they don't believe that all the GMOs are one hundred percent deadly. Now that's not exactly proven, and I like to err on the side of science. But before I get more into that, I, I, 
I'm just going to throw it over to you guys, and because uh, I know you probably have a lot to say after all that. Okay, so that guy is obviously crazy pants, right? <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I actually I do agree that fluoride shouldn't be in the water. Right, I, I think I mean it literally is a poison. Right, I'm not going to get too crazy into the conspiracy, but any medication in the water, in my opinion, is a terrible idea because you can't control the dose. Right, and in a lot of in a lot of European countries, they consider it a violation of uh, of your human rights to put something that you can't avoid a drug in in the water supply like that. So I actually agree on a principled stand, and I'm not too sure on the scientific stands, but I wouldn't surprise me if that was uh, also bad for you in the long run. But setting that aside, this is a guy who thinks that HIV is perfectly fine, doesn't lead to AIDS, and that if you buy some of his vitamins, because I'm sure that he is a, a salesman of the vitamins that that uh, cure HIV, then you'll be perfectly fine, right? Of so, course. Like, but this is the problem that we have with a lot of people. Like, a lot of people will take um, information from crazy sources because they agree with them. They see it in the confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. And... And, and vice versa, a lot of times um, uh, crazy people will take up an issue that you agree with and they might use real information, but since they're so crazy, it discredits things that you you agree with. So it's like kind of Alex a double-edged sword. I, mm. I know that's like me going in circles, but it's kind of a double-edged sword. As far as GMOs, to me, I haven't seen a lot of scientific evidence either way. I am familiar with that with that, um, with that that mice study and the... the thing was that they didn't report was that the control mice, and Jeff talked about it, developed tumors anyway, but they developed t tumors within the margin of error as the GMO mice. So it was it was a study meant to get that conclusion. So Actually, uh, to, to get more into the study, actually, the French team never, never definitively concluded that Monsanto products caused bulging tumors in the rats. Right. His team simply reported the high tumor rates along with its analysis of kidney and organ damage. The project was actually supposed to be a long-term toxicity study model of a 90-day Monsanto safety study, which also used these same rats. It was not supposed to be a carcinogen study, which would have required a larger number of rats. Right. So th this is really why the study was not debunked and not considered incorrect, just inconclusive. They should have had a larger uh, sample size. They should have done a larger study, so they actually have to go back and redo that they when it comes to the science. Rats. But they when it comes to Monsanto, this doesn't mean that I like Monsanto. I think Monsanto is a evil, horrible corporation, and I don't trust it with that much power. But when it comes to the science of GMOs, I'm actually in favor. I, I'm in favor of using science to make things better. That's yes! what it's yeah. about. <laughs> yes! Yeah. It's the patent. <laughs> God almighty! Exactly. Yes! It's, it's the pat to me, it's the patent issues that are clear as day that issue. would make me anti-Monsanto. It's the patents and the suing. The science, I don't know anything about the science. You think I know anything about genetically engineering a seed? So I'm not going to follow <laughs> a study on that. So I totally agree with Jeff's position. In general, I'm in favor of making our food more awesome. And the scientific journal that published the initial study, they then retracted it and kind of kind of took it out of academic circles just saying okay we don't kind of we think it was a wrong study so therefore we're going to take it out and I don't necessarily agree with that I think even that I know that all scientists are just because you've had an unsuccessful experiment you should still publish kind of your unsuccessfulness because then other people can learn from your mistakes and so I I, I totally agree with that I think that's a really good point and I there disagree. was a lot of controversy around them pulling the study like and it makes people think why would you pull that study did you not yeah. want them to, to, to see what was going on? And that gets the conspiracy theorists into uh, sort of a panic. So yeah. I can understand and the, that. Yeah, and then my second thing is that, like, again, I, I'm in favor of GMOs as well. There's a guy called um, Norman Borlag who, a number of years ago, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He, was a, he had a PhD in, like, genetic engineering and stuff, and he managed to create a certain type of wheat crop that, you know, doubled the yield, increased profits. So people in India... Uh, I think that's where it had the greatest effect. This particular um, um, type of wheat kind of increased uh, the overall production per like square acre by 28 percent. Their profits went up 50 percent. So it did a huge amount for India because people weren't fighting over resources anymore. And so I think kind of genetic, and that was just through genetically modifying the crops. And people have been kind of genetically modifying 
um, all types of base, well, crops and animals for you know thousands of years. You select the best yes. animals in your crop, you breed yes. them, and you do that. It's just that we now happen to have more highly technical ways of doing it. I mean, there's got to, there's got to be certain protections now that you know if you're going to be adding in these extra like man-made chemicals and stuff that may make it grow faster. You've got to have some protections and some, they've got to be regulated to make sure or make sure these chemicals that we're putting in aren't going to do too much damage. But absolutely, if they're, if they're going to but increase not... yield and make and basically possibly stop world hunger, I'm all for it. And the thing, the the, the funny thing about GMOs, and, I, and I'll let you get into that um, here in a, in a minute. Uh, I just wanted to say that according to uh, an article in Grist that I had read, did uh, the the question was asked, do we absolutely need GMOs to feed the world, and it turns yes. out that, that they had said no, actually. Really? And yeah, so far they said the GMOs have mainly be, been used in animal feed and biofuels. So, when it comes to to GMO, how much are we actually eating? And this is uh, this may have never happened before. This is a Christian pastor, uh, me, um, <laughs> quoting Richard Dawkins in an argument and agreeing with him. Um, this is a. a about a 13 year old or so uh, uh, letter he wrote to uh, open letter he wrote to Prince Charles who was big on the, the natural organic anti-GMO thing all the way back then so I think it's only fair if the resident Brit reads that <laughs> I'll try and put my read this. I said oh, just for idea I, that was one thing I was going to bring up when you were talking about GMOs that Prince Charles over here royal family he's been anti-science for so long he's been horrible in trying to promote his organic biscuits and stuff that he sells that are overpriced it's ridiculous and he's a ridiculous man but anyway yeah so the quote from Richard Dawkins sir I think you may have may have an exaggerated idea of the natural naturalness of traditional or organic agriculture a agriculture has always been unnatural our species began to sorry it's really small text um, our species began to depart from our natural hunter-gatherer lifestyle as recently as 10,000 years ago too short to measure on the e evolutionary times Bit, bits ever so wholemeal or st stone ground is not a natural food for homo sapiens nor is milk except for children almost almost every morsel of our food is genetically modified admittedly by artificial selection not artificial mutation but the end result is the same a wheat grain is genetically modified grass seed just as a pekingese is genetically modified wolf playing god we've been playing god for centuries so yeah so let me uh go ahead and put in my two cents here and just since we did give such a hard time uh, to the anti-GMO fellow earlier who was obviously making all of his money from the anti-GMO industry, um, I should note that my uh, very first job, my first 40-hour week job when I was 11 years old was in a uh, bean plant uh, placing uh, Roundup or placing labels on Roundup Ready bags, uh, which is a GMO soybean. Uh, you know, with some of the warnings and stuff that were required to go on that. So, you know, if that minimum wage job I had in 1999 when I was 11 years old disqualifies me from, you know, commenting, I just want to put that disclosure out there. But, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, this is this is the liberal global warming, and I, I could be, um, I, I could be mistaken here. Obviously, no, no, it I, actually seems like that, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, and, and, and we're operating from people who are, I mean, obviously right now we're on, I mean, this show is new media to the T, you know, it's an audience-led panel on a new media network. You can't get more new media than this. So obviously <laughs> we're going to be more exposed to the interwebs uh, whenever we're forming our arguments and forming our opinion of people who make arguments. You don't necessarily see, you know, on the 24-hour news networks as much anti-GMO language from liberals as you do on the internet. So I think, you know, we need to put that out there just in the interest of fairness. But that said, at least uh, on the internet, th this is the, the liberal, you know, global warming. We they, It's considered the liberal position to be against this, probably because Monsanto truly is a pretty, pretty horrible corporation that does pretty horrible things. And so if you're going to come after them, come after them. Come after the horrible things they do. Don't, don't come after, after them science. for. Say what? Yeah, don't it's not after the science. It's not the science's fault. It's not the corn's fault. And, and there's even to to push this parallel so far, and the analogy is not breaking down here. Um, I, I bet I would be willing to bet you guys have probably seen this on Facebook or some other media. There's an anti-GMO meme that goes around of two big stalks of corn, and it says oh, like, "See, yeah. even the squirrels know." 
and there's an organic one that's all eaten down, and a GMO one that's like untouched. That's the point of GMOs. So the pest don't destroy them, and human beings have food for consumption, or in the case of corn, for fuels and everything else. Again, that to me, that's almost uh, a non-point there, too, that uh, to say that GMOs aren't necessary to feed the world because we're not using them to feed the world. Oh, we're using them for renewable energy. How? Oh, that's that's horrible. But sure. this is this is an issue where we have shown as progressives that we are more and more willing to bash conservatives for hating science while doing that exact same thing ourselves because it, it dovetails with our agenda of you know typically wanting to stick it to the man and the big corporation because big corporations are the people who have the money to make GMOs. And uh, the science is not there. Now, there is some science there that shows, um, you know, like biodiversity, you know, importance, you know, stuff like that, what it does to the soil. That organic has some uh, some uh, advantages, and that, that's certainly true. But to, to then extrapolate that all the way out to GMOs are bad all the time, you know, yada, 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 is just idiotic. Uh, and also, if you're anti-GMO and you're American, you're anti-papaya. Because virtually every papaya in America is a GMO because there was a horrible, horrible um, fruit. Uh, uh, what's called? Yeah, there were, uh, well, there were um, some viral, uh, <laughs> there was the papaya ring spot virus that swept through Hawaii in the late 80s that almost wiped out their entire papaya crop, which is a pretty big part of the Hawaiian economy. Uh, and so pretty much uh, uh, upwards of 75% of papayas in America are this GMO strand that is resistant to that virus. That's why we still have papayas that are produced in America. Uh, and whenever Hawaii, Hawaii made GMOs illegal, they exempted papayas for some reason. <laughs> well, but, I mean, this um, is, I mean, this is the thing, like, here in the UK, you know, island nation and stuff, we, we like to have our bananas all year round. We want to have our strawberries all year round. If you ban all GMO crops, you're not going to be getting many fruit, kind of that much fruit in the UK because it needs to be preserved. It needs to be protected against the cold and against kind of foreign pests. Kind of the science does help, kind of in so many ways. I just want to bring in. I just want to bring two points in that are going to sound like anti-GMO things, but they're really more anti-Monsanto things because we do have the <laughs> quote-unquote Monsanto Protection Act. We have a huge problem with Monsanto. Do, huh? We have a huge problem with Monsanto. Yeah, but it says if these foods do cause you harm, then you can't sue them um, and hold them Whoa. accountable. And I think you got to get rid of that. Like you got to be if yeah if if it turns out that one of the crops or seeds that they produce are harmful, then yeah you should be able to get some kind of retribution. So like as long as the laws are lined up good and and we get rid of the uh, what really pisses me off is the patent the patenting thing with the seeds mm -hmm. because according to the FDA they're no different from normal seeds but according to the patent office they're completely different and you having like two percent of a GMO gene in your crop makes you a, a criminal and Monsanto can go after you so as long as all the yeah. laws line up in like the proper way and you have and you have some kind of um, recourse that if they do produce a bad crop or whatever, and and we do have still some biodiversity because having all our seeds be the Monsanto seed of the week would lead to a disaster. So, like as long as there's certain checks, then as far as a scientific process, I would think that genetically engineering by taking one gene out and replacing it is much safer than breeding two cows together. That you could end up with a with a disease you didn't know about that one cow carries, and it would be in all the beef that we eat. So like yeah. it's, it it makes it it makes more sense scientifically that it could mm -hmm. be safer, but legally you got to protect us the, the the people in case they do fuck up and it's not safe. 